introduction. <laughs> This is running effective meetings. However, the running meetings will be more downplayed and there'll be more of using Robert's rules in running meetings rather than running effective meetings. But there'll be some tips that you'll see along the way and that I hope will be of some interest to the people who know parliamentary procedure already and some tips that uh, you may not have heard before. So today, that's our agenda. Why parliamentary procedure? Going a little bit in the background of it. Role of the presiding officer, talking about motions and amendments. Everybody loves those, right? I heard somebody talk about tea and the motions already. <laughs> uh, agendas and minutes, voting, goodwill of the assembly, and decorum and meeting. If there's any Questions along the way, please ask them at that time. Because by the time the question can come, if you ask me at the end, I'll have no idea what the content is. So, <laughs> so Dennis has produced a marvelous handout. So, most of the information that is in the presentation is included in here, and I'll probably make reference to some of the charts that are in here. So if, if you have any questions that you don't see something, let me know and let's see what I can figure out where it is. Okay, why learn parliamentary law? <coughs> can I turn that yeah. up around? Rather than having to turn around all the time. Do we need to make a motion for that or anything? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the motion. If there's no that's the motion. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no objections. <laughs> okay, so why must we learn parliamentary law? One is to effectively run a meeting without victimizing the audience. And I'll talk a little bit more about what uh, General Roberts has about that. The second item is even more important, and that's you don't become victimized by somebody who has read something like Guerrilla Guide to Robert's Rules of Order. <laughs> yeah. So they can uh, try to stump you. So you need to you need to understand Robert's rules so that people don't do that. The rule these are some of the principles. The rules of the majority decide the general will of the assembly while protecting the rights of the minority to be heard. So that's if somebody, if in this meeting, uh, less than half don't want something, but more than half do, then the more than half will win. If it's certain types of things, more than two thirds have to want it to go forward or it will be defeated. The individual to participate in the decision-making process, to vote for or against, and to speak to and against the motion. Absent members, people who are not here, and all of those things together. So, no pressure, guys. <laughs> okay, some of the underlying principles. Business to be taken up one thing at a time. That means that you cannot discuss more than one thing uh, in a meeting. If you somebody decides they want to make a motion, and then somebody wants to make another motion, the chair calls it out of order. So that only one thing is on the floor. <coughs> and everything is entitled to full and free debate. So that means everybody can participate. There's nobody who uh, should not feel that they can participate and have their voices heard. Each member is entitled to speak on every proposition. They don't have to, but if they want to, they should be allowed to. And courtesy and fairness to all and with impartiality and equality. That's a mouthful. 
but it just means that everybody should be treated fairly. Okay, and treated with courtesy as you would uh, want to be treated yourself. Some definitions. <coughs> Let's try interactive stuff here. What's a quorum? You need to do third visit. Uh, two thirds of the members to make quorum? No. no. 50% plus one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nope. No. Minimum, minimum, <laughs> minimum number of members present to. to yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And for different uh, things, it can be different. Mm -hmm. For your club, it's generally 50% or over 50%. Not 50% plus one. There's a difference. Uh, at the district level, it's one third of the members of the clubs that dictate a quorum. The executive committee don't count towards a quorum, they just count towards voting later on. Constitution and bylaws. How many have read your Constitution and bylaws? <laughs> okay. I know Tim is going to <laughs> get in. He's going to have to get into the condo uh, constitution and bylaws if you're going to be on the committee. Standing rules. Those are rules that are set down, but you don't want to put them into the bylaws. Bylaws and constitution are hard to change. You need a motion to, uh, a notice of motion, then you need a motion, then you need debate, and there's a lot of work in coming up with what you want to make changes to it. Standing rules, you make, you set those in place and everybody knows what they are, but you can make changes to those at the current meeting. You don't need special processes to handle. Presiding officer. Um, I noticed your agenda. Yeah, uh, like when the president is absent, uh, presiding officer takes care of uh, president's job. Uh, not quite true. Mm -hmm. Presiding officer, go ahead. Who is leading the motion or the meeting? Yeah, the person yes. is, leading the meeting, whether it's a president or another officer, is the presiding officer. Ex official members. Oh, go ahead. Can I just step back to the standing rules? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> step forward. <laughs> uh, for the standing rule, can, can you give us an example of what a standing rule could be? Like, what, what, could, what would a standing rule be? In Toastmasters, the standing rule could be that when you run your elections, you'll have a VP mentorship or a VP of photography or that type of thing. So that would be a standing rule, but it could be changed. You could also have that in your bylaws, but you can't change it easily. Okay. Other things, uh, there are some things that you may want to put in your bylaws, other things you may not. Uh, if you want to have them easily changed, you can put them into standing rules. Uh, things like what time do you meet. If you put it in the bylaws, it's hard to change. If it's in standing rules, then it can be changed uh, if the membership deems it necessary. So you do still have to have a vote and the, the oh, membership yeah. has yeah. to agree to that. Yeah, but you don't have to have prior notice before making the changes. So is there a log or anything that these standing rules are all written down in, or does it just people just know about them? It should be written down, and every member should have a copy of them so that they know what they are. But uh, is that on a one, like, it occurs today, we, we send out a memo or a document, or do we actually compile these things? They should be voted on, and they should be in the minutes. Some clubs actually create a list of standing rules. Okay. Other ones have to go back 20, 30, 40 years to find all the rules that they've made. <laughs> Hopefully they can find all the minutes. <laughs> I, re I recommend a list 
a current list that every member has. Excuse me. Yes. It could be a part of the bylaws and constitution? No. 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 If it's part of the bylaws and constitution, then you have to go through the process of amending the bylaws or the constitution to make changes to it. So you wouldn't want it part of. But you probably want to keep the two of them together. So that wherever you whenever you have your bylaws, okay, whoever president or whoever has that, then they would have the standing rules as well. Or the secretary, whoever it is that would keep that sort of thing. But they probably should. Uh, some I know some organizations where they actually have a book and they keep all of those in a book. And as they change them, they cross them out and then put the new wording at the bottom of the list. You know, so different ways of handling it. But you wouldn't want to put them in the bylaws or they become part of the bylaws. Thank you. Okay, one thing is not on this list, okay, and uh, I think Ron probably brought it, triggered my mind to that. And that is, in addition to standing rules, I think I'll actually have a slide on it, but the next level down is traditions. And those are the verbal things that everybody knows that go on. Okay, like at the end of the meeting, you give away the, uh, or award the per sheet. Okay, that's a tradition. Ex officio members. Anyone? Yeah. Past executives? No. Members who are members of something because of their role. The president is an ex officio member of every committee that you have in your club, except for the nominating committee. You can't be on the nominating committee. Well, the media passed, so. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> I just played a role. No, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going to resign before that meeting? <laughs> no, so officially, the president cannot be a member of the nominating committee. So I'll let you uh, wrangle with that. Oh, no, I am the media pass, so I'm okay. Yeah. okay. A lot of the media pass get that one. Motions and amendments. What's an emotion? What's a motion? Suggestion. <laughs> hmm? Suggestion. Suggestion? Pretty close, yeah. Suggestion of change. Okay. Go ahead. It's a formal proposal by a member. Close. No, so I don't if you want to approve with the membership, that's called a motion. Yeah, a motion is something that you want to bring forward before the membership. To talk about it. Yeah. Okay, and the person who is bringing forth the motion has to be in favor of the motion. Okay, the person who seconds the motion, not so much. They could be totally against it, but they wanted to have it voted on and hopefully voted down. But it is a suggestion for change. It doesn't necessarily have to be change, it can just be something new. No, but even something new is, is a change. What I mean is, it's not just going up and say, I want everybody to know that it's good weather outside. That's not a change, so it's not a motion. Well, Mo motion implies... Well, five days ago, that would have been... <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but, no, but what, I mean, what I mean is, it implies a change. It doesn't have to. There's nothing in parliamentary procedure that says it has to be a change. Okay. It's just something that you want to discuss before the club, and the person who wants it, who makes the motion wants to have that implemented. Yes. So a seconder doesn't have to agree with the motion so much. They just no. they just want to talk about it. They want to talk about it, and they can either be in favor of it, or they could be yes. a person who is 
deadly against it and wants to vote, get it voted down. But they want to talk about it. Because if you make a motion and nobody seconds it, then the motion dies and then somebody else can bring it back up again at the next meeting. Where if you make the motion and defeat it, then you can't bring it up uh, for a while before. You can bring it up later, but uh, not uh, right away. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm not clear as uh, we can see that the uh, motion is something that you want to change. Uh, and you want, there is something that's something you want implement. Implement, right? Okay. So, like, uh, it may be a change, it may be something new. But, like, okay, you want that's to why the change is not part of the wording. Oh, okay. okay. But not like something, not uh, raising a motion of something just to discuss about. Like, at the end of the motion, you want the, the members to vote. That means some, somebody, uh, some percentage are in favor and some in against. Right. So that that should not be something that uh, there is no effect anybody. It depends on what your club's culture is. It may or may not be. Okay. So, but as far as change, don't consider that as part of the actual wording because it's not. Okay. It's just something that somebody wants to have brought up before the club to discuss and uh, if somebody seconds it then they want it to be discussed by the membership. <coughs> yes? After a motion has been defeated, how soon after can it be brought up again? The next session. Okay. Okay, whatever, whatever you decide is a session. Mm -hmm. Okay, in government that's usually the nine months or whatever, and then they have a new session with a new reading of the uh, rules. In a lot of Toastmasters clubs, it can be the next meeting. Okay, not an adjourned meeting, just the next regular meeting. Okay, if you have an annual meeting, it would be the next annual meeting before you could discuss it. Okay, amendments. <coughs> Something addition or change to the motion? To the yep. original motion? Yep. That's where you can use change. <laughs> <laughs> you, want to, you, want to, you want to make the motion so that everybody will buy into it. Okay, it could be a change. Uh, if you want to paint the room green, and somebody says they want to paint the room red, the red could be a change, okay, as an amendment. So it's just clarifying the wording that the membership finds palatable. Agenda versus program. But back to amendments. Okay. Can the original person who make the motion, can he insist to have a what on that, the original motion? Okay, we'll talk about a little bit more about when they vote on it, but yeah, if somebody made a motion and there's discussion, the person could make an amendment if they believe that somebody made a good point that uh, something in the motion is not as correct as the membership would like it. The person making the motion could make that, or any other member could make the motion for the <coughs> amendment. There's no limit on who can make motions on as far as amendments. Anything else? Okay, agendas versus program. What would you consider this? Agenda. No program. No program. I just said program. It's a trick. <laughs> it's a trick question. Yeah. Generally, generally, agenda deals with business items. Program deals with all the other stuff you do in Toastmasters. Okay, if you're, how many have been to a conference? Okay, if you, the conference program is a large thing, and there's a business meeting agenda within 
the program. Okay. In this case, we don't have any. Do we have any business on the agenda today? No. No. So it's basically a program because there is no business. Okay. You didn't read the minutes. We're waiting for you to show us how to do that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's. Uh, is there anything in Robert's rules that actually explicitly defines? There is? Yeah. Of course there is. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Page 539. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I actually don't have a copy of Robert's Rules here. It's 800 pages thick and small print. But I do have the condensed version. Yes. Actual fact, it's a third edition of Robert's Rules of Order from 1893, and they just reprinted it. That's how big it used to be. And they're just adding clarifications and clarifications. And they haven't changed much of the major content. They just added a bunch of changes to it. Okay, rule of uh, ranking of authorities. First is the laws, federal, provincial, municipal, municipal. Then we have corporate charters. And Toastmasters has a corporate charter. How many have read the corporate charter? Okay. It's something well worth reading. Okay. You know, if you're tired. <laughs> Constitution and bylaws. And in a lot of cases, they're combined these days. Okay. And they are in the case of Toastmasters, they're in one document. But the separate sections within that document. Rules of order, Robert's rules, or whoever's rules. There are six that I know of uh, different rules of order Canons rules, Sturgis rules, Westminster rules. So there's a number of them. And whatever is specified in your bylaws is the rules of order. And from Robert's Rules of Order, there's probably at least 12 different iterations of Robert's Rules, different times it was issued and different printings and that sort of thing. They're on version 11 right now, edition 11, but there was some other printings where somebody else <coughs> such as Webster's New World created their own version of Robert's Rules of Order, again based on the 1893, which is in the public domain, and they expanded on it. So there's lots of that. Oh, there's Sturgis Standards Code and Canon's Rules of Order. So these are the ones that are just available off the shelf at. Uh, no, they're available online at Amazon.ca. Okay, Robert's Rules, Standing Rules we talked about, and then Customs or Traditions, which we talked about. Presiding Officer, the role to remain partial, Dennis. To remain partial. <laughs> <laughs> Directs the meeting but does not participate. Not to depart from the prescribed order of excuse me, the order of business. <coughs> so it must follow the agenda that's published. Rules on matter of procedure. And if you rule, there's always somebody who could <coughs> question that ruling. Okay, we'll talk about that a little later. So, uh, some things they can do. Ensure the wording of motions are clear. Okay, that the intent is there. Like a motion to Ontario Hydro will not make hydro poles any longer. Mm -hmm. Now, does that mean that they'll stop making them? Or they just won't make them any longer? <laughs> 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 so you need to be careful of what, what the wording is. 
<laughs> assist members with the wording of motions if requested. So not everybody knows. The, par the president or presiding officer knows all things parliamentary. So if you ever have trouble with a motion, ask the presiding officer. Right, Dennis? Yes. <laughs> Unless you're the presiding officer. Yes. Off, off to Dennis. So when, you, when you're saying that the role of the presiding officer is to be impartial, so yep. does that mean that they don't have a vote in in, in I'll a talk a little bit more about that in detail a little later on. They, Great times. they don't sometimes, but at other times they can vote. So, yeah. At point two there, you said assist members with the wording of the motions if requested. Mm -hmm. So does that mean that the proceeding officer can uh, request uh, a more precise wording? Yes, or they don't know what the wording is. Okay. But but you said if requested, so yeah. you can read that as if the proceeding officer is not allowed to ask for <coughs> for a more precise wording. Uh, they can get around that and ask, is this what you really meant? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. But if somebody doesn't know what the wording is, then they can uh, suggest it. Sometimes they don't know what the uh, rule that uh, they want to specify if they want to make a motion. So sometimes it can be assisted. And prompts for the proper motion as Dennis did tonight. They, there was a motion, uh, and you asked, could we have a motion for, I can't remember what it was, but you- To adopt a program. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he requested that, and then somebody came forward, and motion, and then a seconder, and away you go. <coughs> so if there's a motion required, then presiding officer should, or presiding officer, <laughs> whoever. Okay, motions. There's eight, eight steps, six if you don't count. Uh, waving like a man, fool, trying to get the attention, and then getting the attention of presiding officer and then standing up. Once you do that, then you would make the motion. You don't go into a tirade about why the motion is the best thing since sliced bread for the club, or why uh, it, you know, everybody would be a fool if they didn't vote for it. Just simply state what the motion is. Then another member seconds the motion. In certain circumstances, if you have a committee <coughs> who made a recommendation, the com and the committee is made up of more than one person, the committee is deemed to have seconded the motion that they brought forward. In that case, you would not need a seconder from the general membership. Then the presiding officer restates the motion after they've clarified what the wording of the motion should be. Then they debate the merits. And debate means, you know, someone speaking for, someone speaking against. If you're chairing a meeting and everybody's speaking for the motion, chances of that it's going to be passed. So you may not want to let all 23 members of the club speak to the motion. You can get around that by saying, are you ready for a vote? And if they say no, then you're back to the debate, letting everybody speak in favor. But in most cases, if, they're, if they know that they want to do it and uh, they're ready, ask the question and see whether they want to take the vote. Is it, would it be right for a proceeding officer to ask if there's anybody who wants to speak against the motion? Oh yeah, exactly. That's what I said, speaking for and against. No, but, but okay. what you meant, you said, if you only get positive, uh, I'm assuming at that point you're not getting in. For the vote. Yeah, I'm not assuming, I'm, at that point I'm not, a, I'm assuming that no one wants to speak against it. Okay. I know at Toastmasters International, at the convention, 
they have two microphones. One for those who want to speak for the motion, and they line up. The ones who want to speak against the motion, and they go back and forth until one of them runs out. So that everybody gets a chance to speak for or against, depending on what they're looking for. And they, that's the best way to do it, okay? The first person who made the motion, that's the person who's going to speak for it first, and then asked who wants to speak against the motion. And as a chair, you can control okay, who wants to speak for, who wants to speak against. Right. Number three, the uh, presiding officer restates the motion. Yes. In our club, it's generally the secretary. The chair can ask the secretary to read it. Okay, but it's the chair's responsibility. If okay. it's a long, convoluted one, and they can't remember what it was, or they got a short memory, they can ask the secretary to read it. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the secretary really need to write down. Yeah. All the motions as they're going along, so that if the chair wants to have you read it, especially long ones, uh, I like to, if it's going to be a long one, I like people to submit it in writing. That way the secretary's got it, and the person has it, and then you can read it off the paper. Right. This is a little off topic, but uh, in our club, it used to be the rule that if you actually wrote it out, and presented it to the secretary before the meeting, then that was that was the motion that we we're going to deal with. That there was no raising of the hands. Who wants to make a motion? It's announced by the secretary that there is a motion brought forward, and it's read, and we carry on from there. Uh, that's a tradition within your club. So we voted on it. Then it would, in fact, would become a standing rule. If the intent of it was to be a standing rule to do that, yes. Okay. But the motion may not be a standing rule type of motion. Yes? The person who uh, second the motion, uh, is that person required to speak? Should he ask that person to speak before it's um, put on the floor for others? Uh, not necessarily, no. No. That person just wants it discussed. Mm -hmm. They don't even have to speak for or against the motion. They just want people to debate it and put it to bed. Mm -hmm. Whether they pass it, whether they reject it, whatever. But no, the person who seconds does not have to speak to the motion. Even When you're speaking uh, for and against the motion, is it uh, typical to have one speak for, one against, and then alternate, or can you have more than one person speak for at the same time, uh, in order? Depends on what what the motion is. I'd say if it's something contentious, make, try to get people to speak for and against. Other cases, you may want to just let them free for all. Okay. If everybody's speaking for the motion, then you may want to interject with, ask somebody who wants to speak against the motion. They don't, nobody wants to speak against the motion, and there's a, a liability that you may want to <coughs> ask if they're ready for a vote. If I, if I put forth a, a motion that's going to affect or add to the standing rules, is that something I would have to state as no. part of my motion? No. 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 Well, that's probably something that your club should either have a way of making the, putting the things into the standing rules, or if it's a tradition that things that are of that nature, that they would automatically go into the standing rule, or the uh, you know, standing rules. But there's nothing in your motion that should say that I want to make this a standing rule to the club. Bob, you had something? I was wondering if a person can speak to the same motion several times. In other words, if there's a lineup of people wanting to speak, can a person speak and then go back to the end of the line and speak again? Yes, they can. They can generally, per Robert's rules, you can speak twice to a motion. You can speak once, and then after everybody has a chance to speak, then you can speak again. And Robert's rules basically says you can speak for 10 minutes, 
and then you go to the back of the line and then you can speak for another 10 minutes. A lot of clubs don't have that luxury, so <laughs> you may want to have a set of rules on limits. Yes? Quick question. If uh, a member has proposed a motion, uh, is there a, a time frame? Like we had a situation at our club where a motion last just kept going on and on over a period of weeks and well, months. Is there a period of time when it, you, you can just say that's enough and we can, we can stop it at that or I'm it has to sure keep how on got, going? Uh, uh, continue to come back around. Uh, because sometimes we didn't have a quorum. There were times okay. when we didn't have a quorum okay. uh, to vote on it. And then it was, uh, or either we ran out of time because okay. we were debating on it uh, yeah. for a while. But is there anything that says that we can just stop it or it just has to keep going until it It has to keep going until you decide what to do with it. And what to do with it can be defeat it, approve it, or a number of other things that I'll talk about today. You could make a motion to end, end debate though? Yeah. And if agreed upon then you would go to a vote? Yeah, that's one, one thing you could do. Or you can make a motion to postpone indefinitely. Okay, which means that it's off the table and never come back unless somebody decides they want it to come back. Somebody okay, so generally those things mean that it's dead. Okay. Goes into a great motion graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, any further questions before I go on? Okay, so after members decide uh, that they're now okay, this is how we want to change the wording, amend it, or other things as far as deciding to dispense with it, such as move it, uh, make it a motion on the next agenda, okay, which becomes a special type of motion or whether you want to just uh, <coughs> make a motion that it just disappears. Okay, so there's a number of different ways you can do it. So if you don't do any of those things and you get to vote on it, then the president will put the motion to the vote, asking both in favor, who's in favor, who's against. You don't ask for who wants to abstain. Okay, Abstainers don't count. Only in alcohol related things. <laughs> <laughs> but not in Toastmasters or Robert Schulz. Can I see a hand? Yes. But yeah, uh, sorry for waving so much. <laughs> <laughs> the way the way I was used to, to hold meetings before before I came to to Toastmasters was that when there was a vote in an assembly as large as we normally have um, the question would be put to yay and nay, and if it, if it was almost equal, somebody could ask for a count, yeah. but, but that it was generally not counted. Generally? In a lot generally of not things? counted. So yeah. If, yeah. If, if a motion came up and I asked for a vote, everybody in favor of the vote say yay, and everybody said yay, and if I, as a proceeding officer, thought that that was stronger than the nay. Mm -hmm. I say that the club votes for. That's right. Is, is that is that something that theoretically we could do? I mean, we had that a similar discussion recently, yeah. where we said that that we want to have it written down how many are for and against. It's our standing rule. It's a standing. Rule. <laughs> <laughs> That's a standing tradition. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I'm just, uh, just curious because yeah. so sometimes it, it seems unnecessary to have the the actual count. I think yeah. for well, two thirds. You only need a count if the chair is uncertain. Yeah. How many are voting the other way? And so in a two thirds situation, it might be a different. Yeah, but yeah. that's different. Yeah. Right, but there is some situations we yeah. have to do that. Okay. But how, if. 
generally, okay, as in the agenda tonight, I didn't see anybody voting against it. You know, so it looked like everybody had their hands up. So uh, if it's close, the chair can actually ask for a standing count, and then Sergeant Arms would do the count. Trying to get out of that. You can do all this. Okay, questions? Yeah, Tim. Um, <coughs> we publish our minutes in email after each meeting. And at the next meeting, generally, we, we ask if anyone has no objections, we'll accept the meeting, the minutes as as accepted, or as read, or something, as, as accepted. That's the more yeah. distributed. As distributed, yeah. yeah. So I don't Any know, number of wording. Yeah, it changes, <laughs> you know, depending on who says it. Uh, is that legal? Is that, uh, is that okay? Yeah. 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 A lot of uh, a lot of organizations, mm -hmm. including Toastmasters Club, send out electronic. The one issue with uh, sending out minutes is that there are 40 copies of the minutes, with one for every member. What is the right one? Okay, secretary, any corrections? If there's any corrections that uh, at the meeting, then those corrections would be put into the secretary's copy, but they may not be distributed to everybody. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So the what you have is not necessarily correct if you got a copy by electronic. Okay, it's only what the secretary has. Right. So it, it requires a, a good page. Yes. <laughs> Uh, another question. So Roger had another question. Then well, back. Go ahead, go ahead, too. well, in the in the same vein, uh, the the changes to the agenda. Did we really have to? <laughs> similarly, did we have to vote on that? Said, I'll talk about that. Objections. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Okay, Roger. Um, just bouncing off of Tim's first point, if uh, most times, well, in fact, all the time when. As the president, I see the minutes, I'll go through them, and if there is a change, I'll just let the secretary know that he's missed something or, or to add something. That's okay. We don't, I don't have to have it go through uh, the, the members or anything like that, right? I can just let them know it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But when, <laughs> when the chair asks, where, are there any... Uh, Corrections or errors or omissions, the secretary should read all the feedback they get, whether it's okay. from the president or from other members. Okay. okay. And then continue on from there. Okay. Okay, so that everybody can mark up their copies and be on hopefully the same playing field. Okay. Yes. If I make a motion and somebody wants to amend it, what about if I don't want to amend my motion? <laughs> 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 the answer to that is, once you make a motion, the motion becomes the property of the membership. It's no longer your motion. Okay, unless you really want to and nobody else likes it, you can then ask to take back the motion. Okay, and... Uh, so there is something to do that. But if everybody loves your motion, <laughs> except for you, Ron. except for you, uh, you can't do anything about it. No. So they can twist and change and butcher oh, yeah. and anything they want. No, they can improve it. I think the answer is make an impassioned speech to defeat the amendment. <laughs> you only second chance. <laughs> yeah, you only have two chances of that, though. Uh, well, that's yes. <laughs> Could you ask the members if there is any objection to the amendment, amended motion? Or? No. 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 You have to vote on it. Oh. oh. <laughs> At some point you need to vote on what you're going to do, whether you're going to continue with it, whether you're going to approve the amendment or not. It's not one of those things that I'll talk about later if we get to it. 
<laughs> the courtesy of the, uh, the goodwill of the assembly. So there's some things you can do, but other things you can't. And that's one of the things you can't do. A question. Time for me to wave again. No. Okay. So if you, you said that that we have two chances to speak on our own motion, if order of the day is called and the motion is taken up the second day, do I get two new chances or? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm yes, yes, sir. Yeah. No, you don't get any more chances. No, I I have I only have yeah. two still. As much as the secretary has kept track of it. Okay. <laughs> More pressure. <laughs> if, Bill, if, order, if order of the day has been called, does that mean you can bring forth it next week? Yeah, when the order of the day are called, yeah. that motion then becomes yeah. unfinished yeah. business yeah. Okay. for the next yeah. Yeah. Next business session. Yeah. Has to be seconded, too. <coughs> the orders of the day has to be seconded. But not making it that you don't have to do anything. So you mean two chances and that's it regardless of how many times <coughs> it's spoken on for each person? Or two chances for everyone has spoken, there's still more talk to be done and you can come again for the third time? If you have a generous okay. chair. Okay, they may allow it. Okay. 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 But by Robert Schulz, you have two chances. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see. Whose responsibility is to count how many times of each other? Second. 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 Secretary needs to count, so you oh, need a checkbox like the. Uh, <laughs> He's a secretary. We're gonna lose our secretary. <laughs> Generally, it doesn't really come down to that. Yes. Yeah, we have been arbitrarily calling orders of the day, and, and it has not been second. There is no second. I just looked though. There's no. no second for that. Oh, okay. No. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, well. Sorry. So we continue to do it the same. Yeah. Way. Yeah. It's order. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it is no second. <coughs> we almost had a riot there. So. <laughs> 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 <Police. laughs> <laughs> <coughs> you can interrupt a person who doesn't need a second, you can't debate it, and you can't amend it. And there's no vote on it. That's why you need to read this. <laughs> Good thing for the hand <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I told you I should have read it before. <laughs> Okay, any other questions before we move on? And then the presiding officer announced the results of the vote. If it's a counted vote, it's for and against. Okay, again, you don't count who, who did not vote. Okay, because that's a member's right not to vote. But how many members voted for and against? Or if it's if it's not a counted vote, then it's basically carried or defeated. <coughs> okay, so five different purposes of motions. First is the main motion, which is a category all by itself, which is the initial motion that gets the debate going. The amendments and all the other stuff. <coughs> Subsidiary motions. Those are for the purpose of modifying or disposing of the main motion under discussion. And if you go to this chart on page three, say at the bottom of the top section, there's a main motion, and then there's a bunch of suburbs, subsidiary motions, and then at the top, are some privilege motions. <coughs> so subsidiary motions are ways of dealing with the motion without actually voting on it. Okay? So this third column is what you want to do. The fourth column is what you should say to decide what you want to do. So if you want to kill a main motion, 
I move the motion to be postponed indefinitely. Okay. It can't interrupt. It needs a second. <coughs> and it can be debated, and it needs a majority to do that. Once you kill the main motion using that, then it's again off in no man's land and never to see the uh, light of day again. Uh, modify the, the wording of a motion, and that's to amend, okay, which we all know about. We'll talk a little bit more about that. And I have to refer the motion to a committee. Okay, so somebody, so you have a committee, uh, a rec recreation committee, so you may want to move, <coughs> refer the motion to that. If you don't have a committee, you can actually make up a committee as part of the motion. So we'll have Roger chair it, and we'll have Bob and Ron and Tim as members. And that can be included in the motion if you so choose. Postpone to a certain time, which is making it a special motion at the next at another meeting. Not necessarily the next meeting, because you you could make it several meetings or several months ahead, depending on what the circumstances are. If you need to get a special speaker in to talk about it, uh, it may take months to organize. I know it's taken Dennis, uh, what, three months to get me here? <laughs> yeah, a few emails. <laughs> uh, extend or limit the extents of debate. And basically, that's if you want to. Sometimes, at you're running out of time, uh, they allocate a time, but it's so important that you want to extend the uh, amount of time that you're just discussing that. So that's what that motion's for. On the other hand, if everybody wants to talk their full ten minutes, you may want to limit the amount of time they spend on debate do that to move it to three minutes per person speaking <coughs> so I don't start into a filibuster yes I see under the column amend uh, this limit or extend limits uh, is it yes does that mean you have to move you have to make a motion to amend the motion to limit yeah debate? like I said if you make a motion to limit debate to five minutes somebody could uh, make an amendment to uh, change it to three minutes. Yeah. Okay. okay. If you take a look at the next chart on the next page, precedence of motion. Okay. Right near the middle is the uh, limit or extend limits of debate. Beside that, it says A and T. So you can amend it, <coughs> but you can only amend it regarding the time that you want to limit the debate. You cannot make any other amendment to it. It's limited to a time, time parameter. You know, so you can't really talk about you know, really should we do it or not? It's, you know, time limit, what is the time limit going to be? Five minutes, three minutes? Or you say, no, we want to leave it at the same time. We'll keep talking for three, four months. I belong to a club and we had a problem with furnace. And it came up every meeting and all through the winter. When it got, when spring came, no more debate. <laughs> the next fall, <laughs> the debate started all over again. <laughs> well, I'm going to continue to that chart. If there's no objections. I just had a question in regards to the chart on page three. What is the, it looks like a pregnant S and then a number. That's the first column on the left. It's like S22, the very first one. That's section. And oh, okay. So that's from the if, book itself? Yeah, if you go to Robert's Rules, 
okay, any robber's rules, look for section 10, and that talks about that main motion. So all of these are all based on uh, Robert's Rules Board. Thank you. Thanks for asking that question. Any other questions? Okay. <laughs> Close debate. Call I the actually question. have one more question. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I'm really sorry. So if, if, if we have a if we have a motion on the floor here right now, and Dennis makes an amendment, um, do we have to discuss that amendment if I think that I have another amendment that is more worthy? You have to sit on your hands. Ah. <coughs> yeah. Until, unless your amendment is applicable or germane to the amendment, you cannot introduce another amendment. Okay. You have to wait till that one's either uh, disposed of, either accepted or defeated. Then you could then make another motion, another amendment. You can make any number of amendments. If you wanted to amend an amendment, you could do that. But you can only make uh, a second amendment on the, on the amendment. You can't make any further. They said that any more than two amendments uh, on one is all that uh, primary and secondary. It's all that they wanted to deal with. So. Okay, to lay the question on the table. And basically, it's just to set it aside. And so, Rebecca, can you explain the closed debate? I call the question. I never that section sixteen. Closed debate. Um, okay, the call the question is basically that you want to vote on it. Okay, cancel any further discussion and vote. If it's not debatable, it's not amendable, but it requires two-thirds of the membership to approve closing, calling the question, because you're taking away the rights to speak on the question. So that's why it needs two-thirds. Okay, and the last subsidiary one there is to lay aside temporarily and move to lay the question on the table. Okay, this one basically it goes and it becomes uh, unfinished business and you can, but it's not in part of the unfinished business but anybody can uh, make a motion to take it from the table. Okay, where the move to postpone indefinitely, there is no way to get those motions back onto the floor. Preface motions, they're the ones at the top, and they're basically to deal with comforts, creature comforts of the people, or uh, I guess too hot, too cold, too noisy, or our seats are getting too tired, we need to get out of here. Okay, those type of things. Okay, these are <coughs> two other levels, and they're shown on the bottom part of this chart. And incidental motions, those are motions which can be taken up at any time, where the other motions, they can only be taken up in a certain order. Okay, and if you look at the and the dandy chart on the last page. I'm not sure whether I got a slide in here. The motions are made in this order, going up. So if the motion to refer to committee, you cannot make a motion to amend 
because it's lower down on the chart. Once you get as high as you're going to go, you need to vote on it coming down. So you'd vote on referring to the committee before you vote on an amendment that has uh, been put forward. <coughs> and last of all, you get back to the main motion. I guess I shouldn't have opened it up for questions. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do just a one minute, two minute wrap up, and that, that'd be fine. I can't get through all the slides. <laughs> Ask some questions, maybe, if there's... Yeah. yeah, let's do that. Are there any other questions that... Does the motion, the main motion is at the bottom, and to go up, do you have to go consecutively, no. or can you skip? You can skip. Oh, okay. Jump to whatever. But you can never go backwards. Okay. Okay, you never go lower. You have to go higher. Okay. You'll <coughs> hold it on and come back down. <laughs> um, when you say point of order, what does that exactly mean and can you give an example? Point of order, generally what that means is that uh, if you have an agenda with times on it, mm -hmm. that the time for something else on the agenda has come up and you want to move to that item. So point of order is to take up the uh, current or the item that should be taken up at this time. So how would you know what is the point of order if somebody just call it point of order? Well, they have to explain why they're, okay. mm -hmm. what they're making that uh, uh, motion. Okay. All right. I just want to say that uh, there's a society called the Gutenberg Society and their mission is to convert all books into digital format. And one of the books is the Robert's Rules of Order, and it's in PDF format, and it's available for free, and you can download it. They've, they've done a, like hundreds of thousands of books, and they're all free. So if you have an... Which edition? I believe it's Gutenberg. Sorry? Which edition? A very early one. Hard reading. But if it's in PDF format, yeah. you can do a search. Yeah, it's probably, the, probably this one. Yeah. But it's free. Yeah. Free. Free. <laughs> <laughs> Gutenberg, you're the inventor of the press. <laughs> oh, I, okay. I don't have my spell checker. Right. <laughs> okay. okay, one thing about amendments, there's a special amendment called filling the blanks. Okay, if you have a motion that you want to spend $500 on a projector, and somebody says, I would like to create a blank by replacing $500 with the blank. Then everybody in the club could then, <coughs> just by shouting out, uh, I suggest $1,200. They don't have to have a, a special motion or an amendment or that sort of thing. It's a way of avoiding that if there's going to be a large number of potential values. So somebody could say they want to make it $1,200 because they know their buddy makes them in his basement. And the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yes. Somebody else may say, no, shoot your shop has one with a tablet for $500. That, so it's the same amount. So you can, everybody can suggest a value, and then you start at the highest value, or depending on what it is, you may start at the lowest value, and you vote on each one until you come to one value that the membership is satisfied with. How do I get it to full screen? Yeah, fine. Oh, sorry, that starts you from the beginning. So. <laughs> okay, it's over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so five motions that are always out of order. A motion that conflicts with laws. 
whether it's uh, the laws of the land, provincial, federal, municipal, or even bylaws, international uh, bylaws. So you can't make motions that conflict with that. You know, like you can't make a motion to change the uh, the membership dues for our for your club to twenty nine dollars for six months. Just isn't going to fly. Okay, so you can't do that. Uh, motions which pro propose actions beyond the scope of the bylaws. Okay, if you read those bylaws, there are certain things that can be done within the club structure, other things that cannot. Okay, so you can't make motions that are beyond the scope. Uh, motions which present something already rejected in the same session. So if you voted to, uh, or if you defeated a motion, you can't do it until another session. And that you'll have to decide what your sessions are. Okay, some people take it as being the whole year, other people take it as being <coughs> week to week. Motions that conflict with present, with, with, or present substantially the same question as one which was temporarily disposed of. So if you send it to a committee, you cannot introduce essentially the same motion again because it's already being dealt with somewhere else. And amendments that do nothing but make the, the motion a rejection of the, matter, of the original motion. So if you were making a motion to do something, you cannot amend it to make it not do whatever you were going to do. Yeah, this is the one I wanted. Voting and the presiding officer. The chair does not usually vote. There are two places where, the, unless it's a counted ballot, like a, if you have two ballots, the chair can vote at that time. But if it's a show of hands, then uh, there's two times. They can break a tie. The tied vote is lost. If they vote in favor of it, then there's now more for than against, and it's carried. The other case is if you're voting and there, the motion is one shy of a tie, the chair can vote against and create a tie, in which case the motion is defeated. Cannot be in the favor. Hmm? The chair, the officer cannot be give vote in the favor of the motion? They wouldn't vote <coughs> during a general count. But if you know that there was you know, probably going to a counted vote, that you now had 19 for and 20 against. Uh, 19, 19. 19 against and 24, okay, that would be passed. But if the chair voted against, that would make 20 and 20. Okay, which would defeat it. So the chair can vote in that case. Or the other case, if it's 2020, the chair can vote against, which would now make it 21 in the against, and they would, uh, it would defeat it. <coughs> How can it be vote for the motion? In the favor of the motion? No. <coughs> Quarters of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so we're moving on now. <laughs> so, somebody asked about this earlier, so I wanted to get to this one. And that's Thank you. Please. Wow. Thank you. Please wow. Thank you. Now, the folks in the front here, I'll stick around a little while, and you can uh, browse through them. <laughs>